They bring innovation to the Army and test new equipment for our soldiers. Melissa Bell brings us the details on this year's robotics demonstration as the Maneuver Battle Lab tests unmanned vehicles that have the ability to fire back. Four Benning officials as well as robotic experts gathered at the Maneuver Center of Excellence to see the latest in robotic technology. But these weren't just any robots, they were unmanned ground vehicles and they were armed. Today's demonstration, the, the targets were about 150 meters away from the, from the robotic systems. Our requirement will be to employ existing weapon systems. We use the 240 Bravo the medium machine gun today, which has effective range much greater than 150 meters. So we want to ensure that whatever system we put on it, it can maximize that weapon's effectiveness uh, and, and is not degraded in any way by the robotic system itself. Although this day boasted a 240 Bravo, these machines are capable of handling a variety of weapon systems that can be changed out in a matter of seconds. Interoperability has to play a key piece because every other technology that is out there it needs to be in the soldier's hands. So if we can provide a platform that can carry up to 20 sensors or different mixes of sensors and be able to operate in the same battle space, it gives that soldier more capabilities to complete his mission or her mission. Not only are these robots lethal, but with remote operations, they're operable from over a thousand meters away, giving soldiers the safety of distance while engaging a target and featuring choices in escalation of force like sirens, <coughs> nerf rounds, and more. This is the basic controller. This is all you need to drive the machine. Um, uh, an infantryman takes about a minute to learn how to drive it. It's just, I'm gonna drive my little RC car except your RC car is a thousand pound robot and you can operate it up to a kilometer away. With technology ever evolving, the Maneuver Battle Lab not only looks to define the requirements of robots today, but to help design the robots of tomorrow, as options are limitless to support the lethality, mobility, and protection of soldiers. When do we say we know enough to define what it is we need? So one of our challenges in defining requirements for robotic systems or any, or any combat systems is to define what we need broadly enough to take advantage of evolving technology, not be limited to today's solutions, but again, grow to what's available in the future. By working closely with industry experts, this allows Army officials to understand what is possible today and where it can go in the future. Melissa Bell, Fort Benning TV.